uh, let's welcome our panelists. Uh, anyone would like to go first? Stella? Yeah. Yes, you got me. Um, here I am. I suppose I'll turn on my video as well. Um, greetings to you all, everybody joining from wherever you are. Um, we highly appreciate that you take the time, you spare the time to be a part of this great global movement. And then also be a uh, chief. And uh, um, sorry, I'm getting a technical glitch in my sound. Um, I hope everybody can hear me now. So we are discussing, we are celebrating the International Youth Day, and we find it the biggest or the most appreciated a moment for youth mappers to come forward and share with the rest of the world um, about our contribution, about how we are empowering each other as youth and how we focus for the future by building mappers. So um, discussing the role of youth mappers in global action, for example, for anybody that has not been part of this team, I believe that by the end of this conversation, we shall be able to have a deeper understanding of what youth mappers is and what we are trying to achieve uh, towards uh, supporting global action. So youth mappers is basically a youth-led movement uh, of university students together um, utilizing open source geospatial technology to be particular, uh, open street map and all other uh, samples that are coming on board yeah, to model and build community resilience uh, within each of us uh, from where we come from. Yeah, we have a lot of um problems social injustices uh, development needs and this is the cause of how we can see and use geospatial technology to bring forward or to bring to action and support growth uh, through youth leadership and building community resilience so it is uh, structured uh, through universities um each university constitutes a chapter that comes together under this one global umbrella called the Youth Mappers. And Youth Mappers itself launched in 2014, and we have been mm -hmm. having from the Usage Your Center and very many other collaborators from the independent uh, that come through the independent chapters, but also those that reach through our global secretariat as Youth Mappers. So our role as youth mappers, I, I certainly kind of say our, because I am a youth mapper, I've been part of the movement almost since its initiation. And I am still moving currently, participating under as a regional ambassador. So we all understand that youth constitute the biggest percentage of the global population, especially in our developing world, yeah? And this means that there is uh, this generic mandate that is being cultivated for us to ensure political, social, and economic improvement, justice, and sustainability. So uh, if we go back through decades and years, we find that youth have been coming together or have been driving forces of change, but mainly uh, through either it generates organically or it's just out of a catastrophe. Yeah? We can give examples, even to date, we can see people like Greta who are coming up and they are supporting global action against climate change, but it's because of a catastrophe that, that these uh, young souls and leaders are coming out to speak. Although now Youth Map as the movement individually envisions the use of institutions as vehicles yeah, institutions of higher learning, like universities and higher institutions of higher learning, as vehicles, as a model space to support and empower global engagements and international movement for driving social justice. So, using or bringing together these universities or cultivating exercise of uh, students going through school is one way of pushing global action because we know that at least each and every country has got a university or an institution of higher learning through which we can ensure 
that our message will be delivered and students will be aware of the need to work towards uh, driving social justice. Also, uh, geospatial technology being, uh, it's a lot advancing and very dynamic of late, but we believe that at least in each and every institution of higher learning, uh, this is an element, yeah, for most people. So we believe that if we capitalize on this, on every youth understanding the need to utilize geospatial technologies to drive change, uh, this is one of our responsibilities to come to global or to change, to bring about social justice and improvement. So uh, through our model of training and engaging youth, yeah, so we are focusing on generational citizens, of global citizens basically, who are informed and who are technically equipped in all aspects in the technical aspects of geospatial technology, but also using them to deliver, to participate in economics, to participate in social events, to participate in political events and drive a geospatially informed action. So we are capitalizing on these developments and using them to drive social, economic and political justice, a little bit of it, yes. So also, um, the one major thing I'll talk about um, the role of youth mappers in um, fostering global action with the sustainable development. Since the initiation of the sustainable development goals, they are way, oh, there is so much to achieve out of all those 17 goals that have independent targets that need data, yeah, that need data to be created that need which data to be monitored to be evaluated so the sustainable development goals are a very predominant discourse today for us as the youth yes and international bodies and perhaps the humanitarian initiatives and we can see that if we utilize the higher institutions of learning we shall have a foundation for driving workforce or for ensuring workforce preparations so that we can close and set um, set a target or push forward to ensure that we can drive something towards achievement of the sustainable development goals. So that is another key point or another key aspect that as youth um, or youth mappers is our is part of our agenda to ensure that we are actually fulfilling or pushing towards uh, having the target reached. So we also have, um, looking at the sustainable development goals further, so we know that as youth mappers, we mainly have three important functions in that, that we have envisioned and we believe that from the inception, we have been pushing to enrich or to fulfill the sustainable development goals. So one of those is data creation, the other one is data utilization, and um, the last one is leadership. So I'll explain a bit of it, uh, just slow, uh, just um, in a short time, and discuss why are they very important to us, and how have we been part of them since they Under data creation, we see that our consortium of university for our students movement uh, use this data or uh, participate primarily in the creation of this data through the open street map which is an open open global database i can say where we can have data where people can contribute put edits and then retrieve them after some time and use them this data, the same that we create, can be used by different humanitarian organizations and the different international bodies, basically, to perform towards the various SDG targets. So we primarily participate by creating this data. So utilization of the data is the other part that we have been engaged in from the inception. Is uh, This has been mainly through projects, yeah? Youth mappers, uh, since inception, the different chapters and the secretariat itself, we've come up with uh, a lot of projects from public health to humanitarian response to development that we contribute to, to ensure that we are supporting or fulfilling, not just by 
creating the data, but also using the same data that we actually create. And then also this data that we create is used to serve community purpose. So when you're serving for the public health for a community, if you're mapping for um, mapping, if you're mapping for against malaria in an in a country, <coughs> how are you contributing to development? So this projects inherently are supporting the building of communities, strengthening of communities and putting some awareness to communities when we provide this information on different platforms. Then leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. This is uh, like the biggest of all. Um, through our institutions of higher learning, yes, uh, we've been modeled to learn to be experts, but one thing that we have not obtained is perhaps leadership. And this is one biggest point since inception that use MAPA seeks to use as a tool to bring today's leaders or to model today's leaders. Students are equipped with very many skills, various skills, public speaking skills, research skills, presentation skills, collaboration skills, where they can be able as a chapter to collaborate with an entity, an already established organization, an international organization, yes, to run a project, to support a project in a given country, or even to, to do research, to move anything as required, yeah? So that by the time, which mainly creates that um, link, I should say, it equips this child with confidence. Um, by the time they graduate, they are already skilled. They feel like they already fill up a space in the work environment that is today so demanding. So leadership, is one of the key components and through this project engagement through the participation with the different members through uh, the collaborations that are being set up from students directly to the different bodies to the powerful people and positions uh, students are groomed into better leaders um, the other actions that we are working towards is volunteerism yes uh, to date, uh, we believe that the spirit or the humanitarian spirit has been on the decline, I can say, that very few think about this in a way that Youth Mappers has brought it out, yeah? Using the creating a digital humanitarian, yeah? People who desire or seek to make a difference in any way and through these rapid responses, this online mobilization that Youth Mapper does through its global umbrella uh, has become a very good tool to support especially humanitarian response. So the spirit of volunteerism has been built world over through the different consortiums. And we believe that this is one key aspect that we can actually drive forward as future leaders and leaders of today to ensure that we have sustainable communities and then sustainable leadership as well. We are also building a global citizenry, being an umbrella and of students from different universities. We can see that originally, um, how did we use to create the intercultural aspect of between students uh, from the different worlds? It's this was through scholarships that one had to move from one country to another to find or to create this intercultural bond with another, to learn about another country, to, to learn about another aspect in a different space. But under the same umbrella that we are operating as youth, under youth mappers, yeah, we've been able to establish and ensure intercultural collaboration through research, through the different collaborations, through this one platform where we can come together and push one goal, yes, and initiate a virtual interaction among ourselves and then also build each other, inform one another and empower one another. So we are in a set uh, or in a kind of space where we are building global citizenry. And I believe that whoever has heard of Youth Mappers or who is not a member of Youth Mappers but are youth, I'm sure they would cherish to be a part of a community that is actually deriving the technical aspect of a leader, a leader who knows, a leader who can participate, a leader who is there to stand with the rest of the team. So 
I hope I have not consumed so much of the time and I'll give back to you. Um, Yusuf. Okay, thank you so much Stella for sharing your insight on the role of youth mappers in global action. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So thank you so much for that. Um, your point on using uh, geospatial technology and data to drive social change and sustainable development is one of the key message for me on this talk today. I also like to put that uh, we cannot overemphasize the role of youth volunteerism in today's world because these are critical things that we need to, you know, work towards in, to ensure that uh, we achieve the sustainable development goal. So I'd like to thank you again for sharing your insights and then. Uh, we now move on to the next uh, person. But just before that, I think uh, we missed a point. Um, we are supposed to actually uh, introduce uh, the event of today. So I think I'm going to uh, leave that to Chomba to do so that uh, we can continue from where we stop. So Chomba, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, happy to be here. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so today is um, of a special uh, celebrating our Youth Day, International Youth Day, which the theme is uh, youth uh, engagement at uh, global action. So we're trying to, to, to see how youth um, are engaging on the global level, but not just any engagement, but action. So that's the reason why as youth members, we are here now to see uh, or to show out the world uh, the, uh, the actions that we have been doing, the things that we have been contributing to the world. Um, so this year themes is seeking to highlight the way in which the engagement of young people at the local, national and the global level in yes and the national and multiracial law institution and the process as well as draw lessons on how they are uh, presentation and engagement in formal institution and policy can be a significant enhanced. And we have seen that um, as youth mappers, we have been uh, leading uh, most of the global goals, which is the Sustainable Development Goals or Agenda uh, 2030. So that's the reason why we have this meeting. And uh, please, uh, this meeting is more of uh, engagement. So let's engage ourselves at the end of the day we're going to have question and answer session as well as uh, contributions so if you have questions as the speakers are speaking please uh, make take note of the questions that you have then later on uh, you can uh, ask those questions and then we can uh, uh, deliberate upon those questions thank you yes, uh thank you so much Umba, for that uh, uh it's so uh, spot on so that being said um our next uh, speaker is going to be Adams Chaopang. She's going to be talking about the challenges that youth are facing in taking part in global action. Adams, over to you. Hi, everybody. Can anybody hear me? Yes, can you sure, we can hear you. Uh, my name is Rana Chaopang Adam, and I'm going to be discussing the challenges that the youth are facing in taking part in global action. Now, our generation is one that has, um, we are the ones that don't want to be defined by the status quo. In the world of division, young people are standing up for collective action. And one thing about our generation is we are the ones that don't want to be told what to do, knowing full well the effect it will have on us. Uh, with over 1.2 billion young people aged, 15 to 24 years in the world today, which accounts for like 16% of the global population, the largest generation of young people ever in history. The active engagement and leadership of the youth will be very critical to achieving the SDGs, that is the Sustainable Development Goals, and averting the most severe challenges the global community is up against. But whilst many of the biggest headlines are focused on young people standing up for just climate action, there's so much more that we face and so much more we need to do. So I'll be highlighting just three of the um, challenges that the youth are facing. That's in terms of education, government and politics, and then uh, access to resources, finances and planning. Now in terms of education, 
according to statistics, 30% of the poorest 12 to 14 year olds around the world have never attended school. And by 2030, if the current trend persists, only one in 10 young people will be on track to gain basic or secondary school uh, skills in low income countries. Now, this case can especially be seen in our uh, part of the world. I'm from Ghana, and in Ghana, uh, if the government is like slowly taking policies, that's going to help a lot of you get into education. But in a lot of developing countries, people are not concerned about getting into education, especially for the youth. Um, you have to make like very big efforts to get them into uh, education. And another thing is that our students may not realize it, but then we belong to like a very large peer group in history, uh, which is globally called the youth bulge of more than the 1.2 billion who are facing a lot of challenges, economic, social, and other ones. So now, um, William Rees of the International Youth Foundation said, our time is running out. And if we want to turn like the global youth bulge into an economic and social asset. We have to like take a lot of action. Now, the cost of youth unemployment may differ from country to country, says Brad Smith, but the solution is similar everywhere. Whatever problem we face in Ghana, but that leads to the youth not being employed as a result of the lack of education or otherwise. Whereas the same situation that we face across the world since the situations don't vary so much. Now, again, a lot of companies are dependent on global pipeline of skilled employers to be part of the solution. And how do you get those skills? You get those skills through school, you get those skills through um, uh, engaging yourself in a lot of activities us in school. So whether it's formal education or non-formal education, education plays a very key role in our development as a nation. And corporate support for higher education might mean increasing scholarships and other financial support to make colleges more accessible. And now parts of the world, uh, basic education may not be so costly, but as you climb the ladder of education, it becomes costly. and Parents don't have money. They're barely making ends meet for them to even think of paying school fees, very exorbitant school fees for their children to gain education, even though education is a very strong point. So the formal education may not be uh, available for most people, but we can also always look at alternative forms of education. Now also the report on uh, the global perspective, even though we highlight the opportunity gap affecting youth and um, developed countries, uh, there are a lot of um, disparities among racial groups and others. So now that's like a little on education. Now for representation in government and policy making. Um, worldwide, less than 2% of parliamentarians around the world are under 30. And Ghana itself, I think it was just last year that we got um, a 23-year-old in parliament. The rest of them are like above that age. And if you are going to be making a decision for people, when those people are not even present at the table, what decision are you going to make? So we keep asking the questions. We need representation from every angle. If you are making a decision about young people, but it's all people that is going to take those decisions. We need people's, like, like the very people's experience. We need the people's take on it. We need the people's view on it. Nobody asks young people, oh, this government is having this policy, so what is your take on it? Nobody says anything like that to the youth. All we do is watch their governments do whatever they like then. When we are not satisfied, we have to come out and protest. We come out and protest and then they say our generation is the one who wants to defy the odds, but it's always not like that. It's because governments don't take um, representation of the youth in politics and governance very seriously. A lot of people believe that the youth are leaders of tomorrow. However, 
by two the leaders, they are also leaders of today. And it's their unique experiences and different origins that will help shape their political attitude. Therefore, we need to learn more about politics and get involved to channel their energies to a positive um, change, towards positive change. According to the UN, the youth folks are up to one fifth of the population of the world. And the fact shows that the younger generation is more needful for a greater democratic governance. Now, involving young people in political change or political commitment, as it can involve serving the community through participation in health, education, and charitable work. And the inclusion of young people in political posts is not only beneficial in the short term, but it also provides the basis for strong political engagement in the future. Then the youth are, that are politically involved in their own local community from the beginning are more probable to become committed voters and citizens truly, and to have great and better citizenship. Politics is indeed one of the great tools. Uh, when we were younger, we were told not to involve ourselves in politics because people labeled politics as a very dirty game. So they, it was like a no-go area. But we grew up and realized that no, if we are going to sit back and not get involved in politics, then we are going to always be at the brunt of whatever the politicians decide. And I don't get a say in how I'm governed. And also another thing is that getting involved in politics helps us to break the usual status quo in the country. And dictatorship, new ideas and new leadership of the younger generation can help conquer dictatorial um, practices. And now the youth for the youth. Young people have many problems in the world, but these problems are not heard. So given the fact that young people will understand other young people, then that's the best way we can go about solving some of the problems. Now, the access to resources, finance, and planning. Um, to test the country, don't consult you. Actually, there are a lot of countries, my country being one, don't have like concrete schemes for you to say that, okay, this is what the government is planning to do. They're, they are planning to allocate this amount of this to youth development. There's nothing like that. Nobody considers the youth opinion. But um, we always sit and they bring us the decision that they make. And we have to like change that status quo because they need to consider a lot of factors. They need to consider the youth when they are preparing their national development plans. They need to consider the youth when they're preparing healthcare, energy, education, and virtually all the SDG goals. And even though there are barriers to mentorship, having seats at the table, and biases against the younger faces and voices, uh, in our culture especially, if you're the a youth that is fond of going against the status quo, people seem or deem you to be disrespectful, but um, it has nothing to do with disrespect and everything to do with me wanting what is best for me and me knowing what is best for me and me refusing to take anything other than that. So now, um, according to statistics as well, between now and 2030, we would have about 1.9 billion young people and we cannot afford to go wrong now with them. And uh, there are a lot of areas that we could uh, impact. And for young people, the reality has set in now. If we wait for our turn to lead, we will never get that chance. And that's why we have people like Greta Thunberg who are like championing the cause for climate action and other people who are not just waiting for government or waiting for everything to go bad before they start uh, taking action who are taking action now before anything else. So on this note, I'd like to draw my discussion or talk to a close and leave it to the next person. Thank you very much. And I'll be happy to take it. Thank you so much, Adams. Uh, and I can agree less that the lack of quality education is one of the challenges you are facing globally of course, and taking global actions too. And even though this varies from countries to countries, so I also agree that the youth involvement in governance will shape the way our future and lives evolve. And I really like to thank you for your insight in this. And uh, this kind of leads us to the next speaker, Maliha. Hi, Maliha. Hi. Hello, everyone. 
Thank you so much for joining us. And I, I, I was working with Youth Mappers in 2017 as a leadership fellow, and now I'm, I'm working as a regional ambassador. And I'm going to share my speech on women participation in global action. So I, first I would really like to say a, a great saying that has been said that we educate a man, we educate a man, we educate a woman, we educate generation. So in everywhere we can see that women is playing very important role in the development of the society across the globe. They are playing multiple role as mothers, geographers, educators, community workers, humanitarian actors, and their wonderful contribution is a very important part in sustainable development goals. Now there is a question that how women can uh, can be a greater part in the global action. So I am just going to discuss it in four ways. The first one is that women participation and climate change. We know that climate change is the most complex um, say, uh, challenges right now, and we have to be very responsive, proactive, and ho holistic approach to tackle it. And I think the women are really playing very important role because they have a local knowledge, leadership about the sustainable resource management and as well as sustainable practice at their household and community levels. And you, we can also see that women are really leading because of their, uh, equal, uh, I think, equitable and sustainable practices to climate change. And we can see the women leadership and as well as expertise in um, for transforming the livelihood of people as well as for the livelihood of people in climate change expect. And we can see that their most contribution in climate resilience and as well as well-being of others. And then I'm going to discuss about uh, the second one is the Women Participation and Sustainable Development Goals. In uh, 2030 agenda, uh, we can see about the sustainability and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. In there, we can see that was adopted by the global leaders in 2015. And, and in, 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 in there, they have employed a roadmap, which really describes about the sustainability and leaves no one behind in it. So you can see that the women participation and the gender equality are playing very important role in the sustainable development goals. And for that reason, we really need to include the women participation in social, economic, political in every aspect because without their contribution we cannot achieve the goal of sustainable development and just only including the man participation it's, it's not going to achieve the sustainable development goal in the long term so uh, and then the third one is that um, Omen uh, participation and the humanitarian act action. As I was working as an intern, and in, I'm just sharing a story with all of you to uh, just to focus the, uh, the shifting of the paradigm. How does it work? Uh, I think when I was working as an intern uh, in a Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief, there was a story that uh, that I saw a uh, woman is working as a first responder and he was she was the only woman who was working as a first responder. So I was really excited and I just met with her and I just uh, just wanted to talk to her that what is her passion to work in the humanitarian sector in this way. So she was sharing with me a personal story of her that I'm going to share with all of you and probably the story is a bit sad but uh, but it will you can see the outlook of it that how she is really much inspired in the humanitarian sector. So in, in that story, uh, the woman said that when she was really little and there was, she was living in the cyclone affected area. So she, has a, she had an older, elder sister who was physically challenged. And when the cyclone happened and they have given a very short notice that they really need to leave their house and they really need to go to the shelter. So during that time, what happened actually that the woman and their fam uh, the woman and their family needs to leave their elder sister at their home, and they went to the shelter. And when they come back, they saw that their elder sister had no more. And the the woman said to me that you know, Maliha, I was feeling 
so bad and I also feel the pain, but I just turned my pain into a motivation and that really motivated me to work in the humanitarian sector. And this is the way you can see that the paradigm has been shifting because we at first thought that women, ha women were really big teams uh, during any kind of emergency situation, but right now they're working as a first responder. Isn't it wonderful? And then uh, women are really working individually and in many kind of humanitarian organization. And and it really brings a good scenario because, because women are really working in, in the field and they're bringing the real scenarios from the field. I, and also I would like to share, also I was doing another assignment in where there was a focus group discussion, all the women were sitting. Uh, I was just telling them, you know, in before women are not that much comfortable to go to the shelter, but right now they're really much uh, likely to go to the shelter. So what, a, why, the change has happened and how does it happen? So they say to me that, you know, uh, this is the thing that when we are, we were not going or we are not likely to go to the shelter, people were, uh, people and especially the female employees in NGOs and the ministries were coming into us and they were just asking us the same question. So we have pointed out that there is an inadequate lighting system, the sanitation facilities were not good in the shelter. So on that moment, the women humanitarian workers, they really pointed all the questions and they have really transferred to the case into the ministry and they were looking into it. Right now, the condition is really good uh, in the shelter. And for that reason, the women are really likely to go to the shelter and that's the way you can see that women are really engaging themselves in the humanitarian actions and how the scenario has been changing. And then again, I would like to say about the, the last one that, the, that why uh, mapping is important and how mapping empower uh, women, especially because we know that um, the women education and women health are, is a very important thing in the development of a nation. And we also know that there is a strong linkage between women education and inter development and the spatial data improvement in the health facilities and the education facilities is a must. So the OMEN global participation in mapping, uh, that's, that's, that's in here, we can see that Let's Girls Map campaign. This is a youth mappers campaign and that has started in International OMEN Day, March 8 to International Day to the Girl in October 11. And this is something like really like the people like us, the females, the female students who are contributing into this campaign. And that has not only given us the, the empowerment in technology, because that has given us the voice to, to enrich and to reach to the people and to help them in the humanitarian sector. And, and also this campaign is really creating a greater role all, uh, in everywhere because um, this campaign, uh, this campaign is introducing the inclusive mapping communities. And I just, if there anyone is not engaged with this campaign, I would really like them to include in this campaign and be the part of it, be the part of the Let's Girls Map campaign. That would be really amazing for us to join with us and to just share our views and our ideas with each other. And the last of all, I would really like to say some of the recommendations that I would really like to uh, be shared. So the first one is that um, uh, I think the local women, the way they are just contributing in our economy in every sector that has to be empowered because when I was in the flood affected area for a couple of months uh, for working, on that moment I saw that women cannot work outside but they are working inside their home in the handicraft and that was really like, I know that's really going to send out to the capital area and the, in the capital area that was really like people are really are buying it with a high price but the thing is that there is no any kind of um, initiative to take to support this local women empowerment in the globally way so we really need to bring the local women in the humanitarian sector and in the global action sector and also second I think I do believe that we really need to ensure and giving them the equal space and, and equal resources to bring them in as the decision makers and, and as well as the stakeholders and the experts in everywhere. 
and we really need to increase is the most important thing and that's called the leadership skills in the humanitarian cluster system in the field cluster system and also the country team so i think that omen uh, contribution in the global action is really changing the whole scenario but i would really like uh, like to say that Omen constitute the half of the population in this world and the world wouldn't be a better place for living if we are not counted the Omen participation in the part of history. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for enduring me. It means a lot. Thank you. your personal stories with us uh it is really really inspiring and i hope it inspires all ladies here to pull themselves forward and be the change they want to see of course we are also proud that the youth mapper is changing the way we perceive our women through our let's you know girls map campaign so i think uh, we are also a champion in that area and then we are looking forward you know to more engagement and ensuring that all women of all race of all colors you know uh participate in our program through mapping and contribute to their world successfully so I really like to thank you so much once again. And uh, up next, uh, we are going to be taking another important topic, another important one on the power of volunteerism. This time around by our research fellow, Ingrid Mata Kinti. Hello, um, Ingrid. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sure, we can hear you. All right, so um, as Yusuf um, introduced me as a 2018 Youth Mappers Research Fellow, and currently I'm a Youth Mappers Regional Ambassador. And today I'd like to briefly talk about the power of volunteerism in global action. Um, so I'd like for us to envisage a world in which we all actively help one another at the local, national, regional, and global level. So you'd agree with me when I say that the world would undoubtedly be a much better place for each and everyone. And Volunteering is a surefire way of getting there. So um, summarily, uh, volunteering is the offering of one's time or talents for charitable, educational, or other worthwhile activities. And volunteerism on the, on the whole is the engagement or involvement of volunteer labor, especially in community services. Um, volunteerism is really important and it is an important and increasingly popular mechanism for young people to bring positive change in society, in their communities. And it is, it is also becoming more relevant. Um, it's also becoming more relevant um, as a mechanism to engage the young people in, the global, um, in global peace and sustainable human development. Um, people over the world volunteer for very many reasons, such as helping to eliminate poverty, to improve basic health and education and to tackle environmental issues to mention but a few. So really very many people contribute in their different capacities um, just to make sure that they contribute something or give back to society. So um, volunteering really gives us a sense, a better sense of what is happening in the world. It helps us to get a new outlook on life and to put a, a smile on someone's face while we have fun, while we are doing it. So it really brings very many people together. It opens doors, it drives change. And it, it's really a great platform for young people for both um, personal and professional development. So I think it's very important for young people to think of volunteering as a two-way street where it can benefit you just as much as the cause that you choose to help or support. And very often it is more transformative for the volunteer than the person being helped. And it gives us the opportunity to contribute to our communities, to utilize and acquire new skills and to explore our strengths. We all have, we, we come from different backgrounds, um, education wise and at the different fields we work in. So we all have something to contribute generally. And also we need to keep in mind the fact that the nobility in genuinely helping others irrespective of their race, their gender, religion, political views and ethnicity really brings out the best part of ourselves. And um, it is important that in order for us to fully explore the power of volunteering, we should normalize not just talking about it, but making it a part of who we are, a part of ourselves. And this will have a chain reaction of encouraging other people to be a part of, uh, to be a part of a cause that is much greater than they are. So um, I'd like for us to take a step back and just um, think about globalization. Um, globalization in the data age and how it is shaping international trends continues to influence the way things are done, both locally and within um, different nations. 
And as it has popularly been said, um, the internet is becoming the town square for the global village of tomorrow. And really, you'd agree that nothing could be further from this statement because it borrows from how traditionally issues were settled at the village square. And also currently today, there are very many global action movements that are supported by volunteers. And the contribution of volunteerism to the sustainable development of different nations is particularly striking in the context of the new sustainable development goals, because volunteering enables people to become responsible actors in their own development, as well as being active um, models of change. Um, so as we are all aware, the United Nations acknowledges the importance of volunteerism in pushing um, for global action. And the United Nations Volunteer Program contributes to peace and development through volunteerism worldwide. And it believes that, um, I'm quoting this, um, volunteerism enables people to participate in their own development and peacekeeping, strengthening social cohesion and trust by promoting individual and collective action, leading to sustainable development for people by the people. So since there are really very many forms of charity, volunteerism has helped those with limited resources, but with the technical skills and expertise to give back to society by dedicating um, just a little bit of their time each and every day. So um, the previous um, the previous um, people who have talked before me have really shared that today we have the largest number of youth. Um, so half of the world's population is under the age of 25, and most of these are youth, to put it generally. So what this means is this is a fountain of very many ideas for innovation, which can be utilized through youth volunteerism. And one of the global actions or the consortiums that is around is Youth Mappers, and that is really um, part of who we are today. And Youth Mappers, an international student-centered consortium comprised of student-led chapters, it really taps into this wealth of ideas, just like it says Youth Mappers, it's a consortium and, you know, a big um, movement of youth who come together to map for very many reasons, um, usually humanitarian and for development needs. So the philosophy of Youth Mappers is centered on volunteerism and the noble causes generally of both humanitarian and development needs. So if we can also look at um, the fact that causes which are pertinent to humanity and of interest to various groups and international communities are being pushed at a global scale, um, thanks to globalization. And you'd agree with me when we say that um, the last couple of years and un unprecedented rise in natural disasters. And my mind goes to Cyclone um, Idai that devastated Mozambique in 2019. It left thousands of people, including children, homeless, as well as loss of lives and property in one of this country's most catastrophic events. So when you look at how Youth Mappers volunteers came together to create data to help in mapping the event, the, this, um, sorry, the extent of the disaster demonstrated just how volunteers can use the work of um, resource constrained governments and relief agencies by providing that, that sorry that data which is necessary for rescue and post recovery so um, there are critical missions within youth mappers that need co the collective action of people and that is volunteerism on the whole um, such as crowdsourcing um, most of the work that we do we are contributing to open street map which is a freely available world editable map and most of the data that is put on this map is through crowdsourcing which is um, the practice of obtaining information or input into a task or a project by enlisting the services of a large group of people, um, typically via the internet. We also look at data creation and data collection, and this is a key area where Youth Mappers leverages volunteers, um, usually students, in data editing and data review. So also Mappathons are organized to offer support and it's aimed at making sure that places are mapped. Um, we also have capacity building and mentorship where we train, we have training exercises, and this is to ensure that there's growth in the volunteer network of the students that we have within Youth Mappers. And this is just, um, just some of the few um, missions that we have at hand. So um, notably, since various chapters are local in nature, it has a local impact. And since communities are equipped with knowledge and mapping skills and open source technologies to address their issues, this goes a long way in um, strengthening the ownership of the data and encourages participatory development. Also, um, according to the United Nations Volunteer Discussion Paper 2016, um, the 2030 Agenda calls for stronger efforts in the area of local level data collection and community engagement in participatory forms of SDG planning, implementation and monitoring. 
So the spirit of volunteerism enables this, despite the limited resources. Um, just one second. <clears throat> Um, despite the limited resources and lack of adequate investments in geospatial technologies in very many African countries. So we also need to keep in mind the fact that in order for volunteerism to have an even greater impact than it is already having today, it has to be structured and concerted towards a common cause, brought together by people who have a calling to make a difference. And this has been um, the greatest win for youth mappers chapters around the world, especially because during times of need, youth mappers have risen to the occasion. And lastly, I'd like to end my session by saying that volunteering is an act of service. It is a service to people, it's a service to the community, and service to the world. So it's an act of service which collectively improves another person's quality of life. And I strongly believe that we as youth, not only do we have the demographic, the, sorry, the demographic advantage, um, we also have the tenacity to make a positive change in our communities. So um, thank you very much for listening. I'm back to you, so. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Uh, thank you so very much for sharing your insight with us. And I also like that you put that the philosophy of Youth Mapper is based on volunteerism. That was so spot on. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. So up next, uh, we are having Laura. She will be presenting on the engagement of Youth Mappers in local development. Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. Hope, hope you're doing well and keeping safe. Um, so I'll be talking about uh, the engagement of youth mappers in local development. So first I can go through and share what youth engagement is and youth engagement is basically um, the inclusion of younger people uh, and that's basically youth uh, in a meaningful and intentional way um, for a program or a project or a campaign and this, this, this includes both individuals and youth groups. So for example, in our case, uh, uh, as the Global Youth Mappers Network, uh, it can include both individual youth mappers or uh, a, a chapter as a whole or even chapters per country or per continent or at the global level. And this involvement uh, is not partial involvement, but it includes involvement uh, throughout, say, a project or a program. So from the planning stage to the implementation to evaluation and final decision making. That is what uh, youth engagement is. And as well, uh, uh, in a youth mapper's case, um, uh, and how it relates to local development, uh, this involve, further than involves uh, including youth mappers in projects that have local impacts, that have positive a positive impact in a community or in an area. So uh, you might ask ask yourself then why is why is this important? Why is this necessary? Um, and as as the previous speakers have shared, uh, youth constitute about fifty percent of the global population, and this means that we also face and encounter ch uh, challenges on a day to day basis in our local areas, and just because of this uh, we should be able to have a seat at the table so that we can share our experiences and our experiences should then be able to be used to create and design sustainable solutions and another another reason why it's important to involve youth um, it's because a lot of a lot of youth um, and basically the younger generation, so basically millennials and the Generation Z. Uh, these are people who are usually very excited about new technologies and whatever is coming up. So uh, the various mobile applications, uh, even when you come uh, to talk about scientific um, it, innovations, so things like open data, things like free and open source software, I'm sure uh, for most of us, if you've done an internship or, or an entry level job, say for example, in a local government, especially in third world, third world countries, you'll find that there, there are no solutions to some problems because um, it is quoted that uh, there's no data or 
people do not have a license uh, and in in the real world or um, or currently we we already have so many open data initiatives we already have so many freely and available open source software for use so i think it's also important to uh, involve you in local development because they bring in that aspect of what's new and what can be used. Uh, in the case of youth mappers uh, as well, um, our work primarily focuses on open data and that's on open street map and also the, the use of free and open source software because uh, there's a quote that usually says open data is good but without free and free software or available software it's useless and uh, the reverse is also true a free and open source software is is good but without open data it's actually useless so um it's actually important to include these voices because uh, you get to um find solutions uh, that were not existent uh, in a in a certain um in a certain in, in certain areas just because people are not aware of that so um other other than that uh if we if we can look at, at also youth mappers as, as a whole we are a global network with people from different countries different continents basically we, we are covering the entire the entire world and what this provides for us is provides a very good platform for us to network, for us to share experiences and learn from each other. Because in as much as problems are uh, located, uh, are located per area, uh, we usually have similar, similar challenges. Uh, so maybe even things to do with uh, climate change and how humans are contributing to this, you'll find uh, it's very similar to to, in, in different cities and in different areas. So uh, what Youth Mappers has done is that it provides this platform for us to learn from each other and to share. And including these voices also just makes or, imp or rather improves the process of creating sustainable solutions for, um, for a local area. And um, how, how, how this can be done is, number one is through projects. So, uh, for example, uh, without even going to what to the to the so many projects that Youth Mappers has done, if we look at the various COVID nineteen projects that have been ongoing, for example, uh, in Uganda we saw the we've seen the Youth Mappers chapter at Makerere University working together with the local OSM community and together with the Uganda Red Cross to map the border areas of of the country and to help to help in tracking uh, COVID-19 in such areas where there's high risk because of the entry entry into and out uh, of the country and and that is one of the ways that organizations and communities can involve youth mappers chapters to foster local development another example would be in Tanzania where um, uh, the crowd to map organization uh, works to map rural areas in Tanzania to help end FGM and if you look at their work you'll notice a lot of youth mappers are usually involved in in this process. Uh, lastly I would also highlight the USAID, um, USAID projects. Uh, if you look at the, at the, at the youth mappers projects page on, on, our, on, on, on our website you'll we'll see that there are a lot of projects uh, in different countries around the world where they, they have involved uh, Youth Mappers chapters and these projects, if you look at them, the projects that are mainly focused on creating local, local impact. Uh, another way that um, Youth Mappers chapters can be involved to foster local development would be through input and consultation. So basically, um, uh, uh, inviting chapters or members to share um, their knowledge on certain aspects, uh, even if it's sharing about a challenge and sort of uh, helping, uh, including them in the design of a solution. Um, 
for example, another good example that I can use for this is the Open Cities Africa project uh, that was done by the World Bank, I think from last year. Uh, and you could see that uh, throughout the process, a lot of youth mappers and even a lot of youth uh, were involved in, in that procedure straight from, from like uh, the design to even the implementation. We saw a lot of youth mappers uh, participating in data collection. We saw a lot of them participating in the analytics bit, so um, processing the data and uh, producing maps and all that. Mm. And then lastly, I'd say the last way, the, the other way that uh, youth mappers can be involved to, to, to sort of foster local development is through capacity development. Uh, in as much as there are so many youth and uh, the people with vibrant vibrant ideas and all that, uh, you also find that at times there's a skill gap. So um, someone might know how to contribute to OpenStreetMap, but uh, the knowledge on how to use this data, so uh, getting this data off OpenStreetMap and actually utilizing it uh, on a project that and say producing maps or getting insights that you can then give to uh, governments or organizations, I will constantly find that that is a skill that's missing. So that's another way that uh, also organizations can come in through internships, through fellowships and such, uh, so that uh, in as much as someone is contributing to a project, uh, a youth mapper can also learn uh, from this project on how to do other things uh, beyond contributing to OpenStreetMap, which is still good and really impactful, but I think it's also important for, for, for these organizations to also have, have programs, programs that are mainly focused on capacity development uh, so that uh, in as much as we're producing a lot of data on a daily basis, uh, we are also using this data to create change and to impact lives in, in, in our local areas. Um, and I'd say, yeah, basically that's how, what, what youth engagement is and how, how organizations, communities, and even individuals can include youth mappers chapters to create impact in, in our local areas around the world. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much. Uh, free data without tool is useless. That's true. I also agree that without uh, data, our, without tool, our data is actually useless. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we have come to the, okay, the last uh, but not the least uh, uh, topic uh, today is going to be delivered by Irene. It's going to be on capacity building for youth development and engagement. Hello, Irene. Hello everyone. Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining the discussion. And I'm very happy to be here. Okay. I'm going to talk about capacity building for youth development and engagement. So youth is the foundation and powerhouse of a nation, right? So uh, Strengthening the capacity of youth through some development activities and ensuring sustainable uh, development should be the basic of youth development. Like, uh, I want to talk about the remote area people because they are more likely uh, not available in digital platform. So, uh, and in Bangladesh, there are at least 50% people or 60% youth is uh, like from remote area. So we should focus here because uh, they are the important issue here. Okay. So when we uh, actually focus on capacity building, we need to understand that they are not available in digital platform. What we have to do that, 
we should engage them in a manual group like there could be a mid group uh, who can connect the rural people with the digital platform so uh, we can like your mappers we can have uh, some uh, projects or some um, capacity building activities to connect them with a uh, big platform like youth mapper so um, it uh, could be anything like facilitating um, training managing learning uh, exchange program developing learning materials anything and this is gonna be a lifetime achievement for anyone so I uh, I have to tell you a story about a girl. I, when I worked in Rhinda, I met a girl named Rubina. She one, wanted to work despite he, she is married and she uh, actually facing many problems from, from her family uh, family side. So she still contact me because she wants some job or some uh, work so that she can like uh, fulfill her wish, her family wish, etc. So you know, when I talk with her, I feel like I should do something for her because uh, she actually showing the interest of doing something for her family, for her horizon. But thing is, she doesn't have the platform, right? So like, I can give, give her some training or some kind of other facilities, but there is the issue that uh, I, I feel like that uh, there should be some organization or some kind of funding opportunities to develop their side right so what can they do uh, let's uh, talk about that uh, capacity building activities could be a large large scale event so development of information communication and media tools um, uh, their media tools is something like that they watch tv they have a uh, they have a smartphone so the communication could be like with smartphone or some manual training or something like that. Uh, the, uh, what I have already said that uh, some kind of group, they can just give them hand, hand on training or a hand on, uh, hand on platform so that their work can be connected to the global. Okay, so the development of youth work methods would be a solution. How? Because tool and material as well as youth work curriculum can be improvised so that uh, they can engage themselves here with us, with everybody, like urban people. Then we can create some uh, delivering of youth work. What I can say here that we usually do some volunteer work for you. Uh, suppose when I was a uh, university student, we, uh, I if I want to work for uh, some kind of organization, volunteer for Bangladesh or others, they actually provide the volunteering work. They actually can't, but, uh, or uh, they can uh, just they can't be able to pay the youth. This is actually uh, discourage someone because if you got something from your work, it will help you uh, to inspire more and more so that you can work more. So what I am saying that not, not it's not a payment. It's just a gift. It could be a gift. It could could be a mark. It could, it could be a diary, so that we can encourage them to adhere to work with global organization. Right. So uh, this could be a way. I'm saying that uh, another way 
uh, is that we can pay them a minimal amount of payment like you know in Bangladesh, if you uh, pay uh, someone 1,000 taka, it will be enough for a student to cheer, uh, his, uh, cheer up and do some uh, masti and then he or she can work with full uh, inspiration and full mood. They can do more and more work. They can have some innovation capacity so that they can use that money right so uh, active involvement of local citizens in any planning decision making and uh, efforts to enhance local well-being is most important thing right because in in this time of the world, we are going to connect everybody, every, like everybody. Like they say, we are here from different, different countries. I'm from Bangladesh, Malia from Bangladesh, Ingrid from Uganda. So we are communicating with each other through a platform. I'm just thinking that we can have a platform so that uh, uh, so that the, uh, that platform can connect rural people uh, who don't have uh, that much resources we have right now. We are privileged somehow. So capacity capacity building for youth development actually should be for them. Right, we can actually we can actually improve ourselves by knowing our circumstance, our situation, by our uh, facilities. But the resource of them is limited. What I want to say that their resource should be improved. Non-formal way would be a solution or uh, a volunteer work, a humanitarian work. I, I know everything. I believe this is a uh, very novel idea. But what I want to say that we need to improvise this idea in a little bit uh, different way. Like launch and taste and implement your work practice. But we have to connect everyone. Everyone from urban rural people, everyone. So, uh, uh, flexible learning materials, virtual cooperation, and open, uh, open educational uh, resources, everything is available. When I like work, I'm working in an organization who actually focus on capacity building services. So uh, when I started to work with them, I I feel like uh, what they uh, what they actually do. So I just uh, try to uh, get the idea of their work and interest. So what I feel that they actually doing every projects or program for rural people. So actually they wants to develop the rural section, the remote section. But maybe, I'm saying that maybe we need more and more organization to do such works, like professional development or informal lear uh, learning. So professional development is something like that. We have uh, got a, uh, we have got a uh, renowned university, we have got a uh, facilities, everything. But what about that, Rubina? She doesn't get, get all these uh, facilities I have already. Right? So I'm saying that, or I believe that, we can, or youth members, or anyone can focus this, uh, this sector and just like just uh, promote some platform to improve the youth development or uh, to improve the youth or uh, develop their resources so that we can engage more youth in glo globally right so I am concluding 
my session we we thought that uh, if we want to do something we can do it together so cheer up we will meet again thank you over to you chauma thank you very much okay. everyone for that uh, great presentation i uh, really appreciate your effort uh, right now we get into question and answers so if you have any other question you can raise your hand uh contribution um where you need clarity please feel free as youth we are youth we so we're not supposed to be so uh, stiff uh, let's be flexible and let's engage each other so uh team or family uh questions now can come on Hello. Uh, Chomba, are you asking them to chat, uh, to post on the chat box or they can just unmute the mic and just go ahead with the question? Okay, the, if you can't manage to talk, uh, you can uh, just text your question on the chat. Uh, and then if you can talk, uh, you can unmute yourself, uh, the mic and the video, no problem. And then you can ask or you can contribute. Remember, uh, we're trying to look at uh, the global engagement of youths uh this year or that's the theme for the youth international day yeah uh hi hi everyone I, I i just remember that i forgot to add something so um like in terms of also engagement between your purpose and other organizations uh depending on your country and whatever you're working on at times it's it's expected that the organization will will come to you but but at times it 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 doesn't happen so in such cases uh, it's also advisable for youth mapas chapters and leaders to also reach out to organizations and pitch their ideas and their projects because uh, in as much as we might work on different projects uh, at the university level or or even for an area if we do not involve uh, policy makers and decision makers so different levels of, of local government uh, these projects might only be done um, once uh, and while they, they would be maybe implemented to existing processes and like so that like sort of foster a habit um, of like creating solutions that create change for a longer period of time so yeah it's it's yeah it, i just wanted to add that I, I i remember that i forgot to share that yeah in cases where you have not been approached uh, feel free to also reach out to different organizations and pitch your ideas and projects to them all right thank you Yes, with mapas, you can unmute yourselves, your mic, your video, and then ask the question. If you are unable to do that, you can um, just try uh, type your question in the chat box. Then I can read it out to everyone and uh, can try to answer. Or um, if you don't have a question, you have um, uh, something that you want to say or participate in any other topic that we talk, uh, discussed, please you can go ahead. Okay. Okay, let me just quickly jump in. I have a question for Ingrid, particularly on the power of volunteerism. And my question is this, is there some level of limitation on, the, on volunteerism that, you know, we can uh, volunteer? As in, do we have any sort of limitation in terms of how often we can contribute to, you know, project or event worldwide? Thank you. Well, um, thank you for your question, Yusuf. I think the only constraint one would have is personally, like their time. But then I'm aware that there are very many organizations right now that would really want to have volunteers. But then over time, um, the number of volunteers are pairing up. 
sort of gone down. So I don't think it would be a problem for one to get a place to volunteer. And it's, it really depends on you as an individual, what you're passionate about and where you feel would be your best fit, where you can um, make a really, really big impact. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ingrid, Thank for you that. so much. That was so mm -hmm. sense. Youth mappers, any question, contribution, please? Okay, it seems like uh, everything uh, was well said. So, I have a request from you right now. Um, Chamba, real quick, there's a comment in the chat. Can you read it aloud so everyone uh, can see it if they don't have the chat open? Okay, let me see it. Okay. All right, uh, this is contribution coming from uh, Charles Chilufia. Uh, first speaker on the first speaker, I think it can be well to have an inclusion of all youths in youth mappers. Uh, these are youths who are educated and uneducated in rural areas to be contributing to the youth mappers as the, as the theme says, encouragement of youth globally through actions. It can be done through making those youth mappers in highest learning institution to be translating youth mappers work in Lulo language, in local languages, ETC. Thank you very much, uh, Charles, for that contribution. Okay, from Nula, uh, okay, she, she's saying, hello, greetings from Colombia. Uh, it is inspiring healing how youth is leading this moment to shape a better future. Congratulations to your all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia. All right. Thank you very much, Thank everyone, you. for attending today's session. We appreciate your time and uh, your effort to be here. Uh, remember, Youth Mappers is not about maps, but it's about reading mappers. It's all about us as the leaders of uh, today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you another day. Thank yeah. you to our speakers and thank you to each and every person that participated today. Bye. 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 Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.